Hi guys and welcome to another review video. In this video I'll be taking a look at the Derwent watercolour pencils, the 24 set in particular. As per usual I'll start off with an overview of the packaging and the pencils themselves, then swatch the colours out and take a look at their properties and after that I'll be showing you a time lapse demonstration of the set and I'll go into a few more specifics about the product. As always timestamps to the video sections will be in the description box down below. And like all of my previous review videos, I'm not at all sponsored by Derwent or anybody else I've mentioned in this video, so rest assured that all opinions are my own truthful thoughts. So let's start off by taking a look at the packaging. So as I said, this is the 24 tin set of this line, and they come in sets of 12 to 72 pencils. I really love Derwent packaging, they almost always come in these tins, which are a great way to protect and display your pencils, but you can also buy them in very sleek looking wooden gift boxes too. The pencils are sealed into the tin with cellophane, but the lid isn't contained in this wrapping, so in the shop you can remove the lid to look at the contents without the contents being removed, damaged or stolen. Turning over to the back now, like the front, the back has the swatches of the colours in the set, but it also has a description of the product and a couple of different techniques. So it says, These versatile pencils have a water-soluble core, allowing you to draw and paint with complete control. They can be used wet or dry on wet or dry paper to create a variety of effects. And apply dry pencil colour to dry paper and add a light wash of water and add dry pencil colour to wet paper to create soft lines and edges. So inside the tin, here's the cellophane I was talking about, and I've already partly cut it open so I could check all the pencils before making this review. I've been unlucky in the past and had a couple of quality control issues with previous Derwent purchases, but their customer service has been excellent at sending me free replacements, but in any case I wanted to make sure the contents were okay before I started filming. There's a bit of history here on the inside of the lid, but I actually wish they'd make better use of this space and instead include light fasteners information here. I'd also quite like to see a little leaflet included in the tin with some demonstrations of techniques, some inspiration and maybe a bit of advertising to see what other products they might have available. Derwent used to include such leaflets and I wonder why they made the step away from this. Now taking a closer look at the pencils themselves, these pencils are pre-sharpened, hexagonal and 7mm wide with a generous 3.4mm core. The wooden casing is Californian incense cedar and all Derwent pencils are made using this wood, but I find that the hexagonal pencils they make have a slightly lower quality, rougher feel than the 8mm round barrel pencils they make. On the plus side, the hexagonal barrel means that they won't roll off your work surface as easily and offer a more precise grip. Each pencil is painted dark blue with a coloured end cap and has a smooth non-glossy finish. Printed on the pencil in silver text is the place of manufacture, the brand and line name, a little paintbrush to signify that these are acrylable as well as the colour name and number. The text is really clear and readable, and I always approve of Derwent having both the colour name and number written directly on the pencil, as it makes it easier to keep track of colours. So now on to swatching these colours out. I've drawn out a grid for each of the colours here along with the colour name and number, as well as the light fastness value. I've also drawn a line through each box in a black pen to be able to gauge the opacity of each colour. When swatching any new medium, I like to colour a gradient to get a feel for how pigmented the product is, so here I've done both a wet and dry gradient for each of these colours. The paper I'm using is Canson Montville 300 GSM watercolour paper, which seems to work great for this type of medium as it holds up excellently to wet techniques, but has a good amount of tooth to lay down the pencils. The pencils seem to be quite well pigmented and the majority seem to be semi-opaque. It's also worth adding that some of these colours appear to granulate slightly around areas of pigment that haven't been fully activated with water, so that's something to consider if you want smooth and even washes. As a whole, this range of pencils isn't incredibly bright or vibrant. They all have a slightly subdued feel to them, although of course some colours naturally pack more of a punch than others. 
The colour range is excellent, I think. There's a good variety and it's particularly strong in the green and brown part of the spectrum. I think this would make a great set for natural and landscape drawings. As usual, the end caps don't exactly match the pigment colour, but they are good enough to be a rough guide. I always recommend making and using a swatch chart for yourself, but if you're interested in seeing mine, I'll leave a link to a scan in the description box. So on the back of the tin, it said that you could either apply the pencil to dry paper and activate with a wet brush, or apply the pencil to damp paper to get soft lines. So first off, I wanted to see just how easily these pencils activated with water and how much of a residual line would remain if I just applied one stroke of the damp brush over the applied scribble, compared to really scrubbing at the mark. I was surprised to see that with just a soft touch of the brush, the pigments dissolved really readily and although the marks still clearly remain, a lot of pigment got pulled across onto the bare paper. The swatch I scrubbed at with the brush dissolved entirely, which is fantastic. And the pencil lines applied to wet paper did soften a bit and appeared a little more saturated than when it was applied on dry paper. I have heard of people touching a wet brush to the tip of the pencil in order to apply the wet brush or pencil to the paper to get a really saturated colour, but I would advise against this as getting the wood on the pencil wet can actually result in the wood cracking. On the side of the paper, I also tried out some different blending techniques. My first blend test was with three primary colours to see how well they blended into each other without the aid of water. I found this to work really well and they blended together excellently. This goes to show that you really don't need a huge set of these pencils to be able to have a good range of colours if you're just ready and willing to do a bit of blending. I tried a similar blend test with water and it did work, although I'm pretty clumsy and not very proficient with a paintbrush, so I didn't get as smooth of as a transition as I would have liked, but I'm sure it's entirely possible with a little bit of practice. I tried erasing a thick layer of the dry pencil with my Derwent electric eraser, and it did an excellent job of removing the majority of the pigment, although the paper was stained a bit afterwards. I also tried lifting the pigment with a wet brush, which actually did a better job of cleaning the paper than the eraser. I also repeated this test with an area that I had already activated with water and let dry to see how well the pigment would reactivate and I got just the same result. I wanted to try the wet blend again but with harder borders between the colours and once again my clumsiness prevailed and I ended up lifting more pigment than pulling and blending together. But in doing so, I did notice that these pencils do stain a little if you apply them to the page with a good amount of pressure, so although I was able to mix some of the colours together, the boundaries had been sealed into the paper and it was so difficult to get a seamless transition. At the bottom, I also wanted to see how well the white mixed and blended, and it seemed to do an excellent job, it seems like a very pigmented pencil. Another little test I did was to see how many layers I could get with these pencils. Applying the pencils in light layers, I felt like I could achieve about six different levels of saturation, and I could get an even darker shade by doing one layer of firm pressure. The laydown of these pencils is quite different to regular coloured pencils. They do have a dry feel to them, but you are certainly limited to the amount of dry layers you can apply, as they quickly build up a waxy film, but I do imagine that you could layer more over areas you've burnished by dissolving some of the wax away with water. So now on to the demonstration part of the video. I've already sketched out here a picture of a peacock butterfly on some buddleia and foliage. As always, I leave the link to the royalty-free reference I used in the description box, so if you want to recreate this image, by all means you can. When doing these videos, I try to choose subject matter that suits the colour palette that I have with the materials that I'm reviewing, so as per usual I went for something colourful, but because this set is strong in the more natural shades, I went for an image that was strong in that area too. The paper I'm using for this piece is Clairefontaine Pastel Matte. 
I wasn't too keen on the feeling of these pencils on the regular watercolour paper as they have a dry feeling to them which I'm just not used to compared to the waxy regular colour pencils that I usually work with and I know that pastel matte can hold up just fine to water. It's just a personal preference, they work just fine on regular watercolour paper but I had a feeling that my overall experience of these pencils would be improved using this surface. I also thought that the pastel matte would really help to pull the pigment from the pencils and get good and punchy saturation, something that I was a bit worried about given that I thought the colours in the set are a little on the subdued side and I wanted things to be as vibrant as possible for this piece. As you can see, I start off with the background. This piece was my first that I completed with these pencils and I'm certainly unfamiliar with water activated pencils in general, so the process was a bit of a learning curve. To begin with, I decide that I'll layer down a lot of dry colour to a point that I'm happy with, then blend out with water and add back in extra details and contrast at the end. It probably wasn't the best approach, but I like the painterly outcome. I bought this set for 149 Norwegian krona, which equals about £13 or $18 from my local Klaus Olsen about a week or so ago. And if you hadn't guessed by the price, they were on sale at around half their usual price in this shop, and they actually worked out cheaper than what I found them online, so I just knew I had to snap them up. I think these Derwent sets have been reduced recently to try and clear out old stock as Derwent have recently redesigned a lot of their packaging so if you're watching this video at the time of uploading I recommend looking around your, your local shops to see if you can find any similar bargains. After I have the main bulk of the background in I start on the flowers because I know that I don't want to leave these fiddly things until last. The light violet colour in this set would have been perfect for these flowers, but I had chosen to avoid this colour and the rose pink as they both have very low light fastness ratings, so instead I use a mixture of blue, purple and white to achieve the colour that I want. Speaking of light fastness ratings, this tin is definitely a mixed bag. Derwent uses the blue wall scale to rate their artist products, which is a scale of 1 to 8 where 1 is the lowest rating and 8 is the best. A 6 or above is considered archival, so the colour should remain true and not fade or change for at least 50 years of standard display conditions. And many artists like to use this as a cutoff point for what is or isn't acceptable to use for a piece they intend to sell or display. I'll leave a link down below to a chart that I found helpful in processing light fast rating information in terms of what it really means, but in any case, going by the 6 or above cutoff point, only 14 out of the 24 are okay to use under these circumstances. I'm okay with going down to a rating of 5 personally, for reasons I'll probably explain in a video about light fastness, but that still means that 7 out of the 24 pencils are unusable outside of sketchbook work or pieces that I'd hide away in a portfolio. And it's also worth mentioning that the more you dilute a colour, the quicker it will fade, and I feel like diluting the colour and creating washes is something you'd want to do with watercolour pencils. As expected, most of the bright and pale colours score lower on the scale, and the earthy tones, such as greens and browns and neutrals, all score quite well. But the whole light fastness thing is actually something that frustrates me frequently about Derwent. I really love their products and variety, but most of their colouring products seem to have mixed light fast ratings, which takes the allure away from them a bit. Many of their products are marketed as artist and professional grade, so you'd really expect the high light fast ratings to match. Out of the entire line of 72 watercolour pencils, only 35 score 6 or above. That's less than half, which means that if you're only going to use light fast colours, you're essentially paying double for the pencils you can actually use if you buy the entire set. Fortunately though, these pencils are available as open stock, so if you're only interested in the light fast colours, you can buy these individually. Anyway, I'll leave a link to the colour chart in the description box down below, which also gives information about light fast ratings and which pencils are contained in what sets. 
Back to what I'm doing with the drawing, I now start on the butterfly and I work more with layering here and applying water in between. I'm careful to build up the colours separately to try and avoid the colours muddying or mixing where I don't want them to. I found out the hard way that I had to be extra cautious with how much water I applied to the paper, as the water spreads a lot on pastel mat unlike watercolour paper, and as a result just a little too much water can result in uncontrollable bleeds. I'm really focusing on detail and contrast as I work on this part of the picture, as I really want the butterfly to be in strong focus. These pencils sharpen well to a fine point, which makes them great for detail work too. The cores seem pretty solid, and I didn't have any breakages, but like I mentioned before, the wood on the pencil seems a little flaky and rough compared to the wood on the round barrel Derwent drawing and ink tense line. I also want to mention that some of the cores perhaps didn't seem perfectly centred, as when I sharpened them, the fresh tip wouldn't be revealed evenly, so on one side the wood would come up much higher than the other. This isn't a really big issue other than needing to sharpen the pencils perhaps a little more frequently, but I have heard that misaligned colour strips can increase the chance of pencil breakage during sharpening, so do keep that in mind if you encounter this problem. So as for value for money, I think these pencils are reasonably priced at their current price on Amazon of £22 or $20, for the 24 set that is. The quality of the pencils is good, they really have that beautiful watercolour effect to them, but with the control and precision of a pencil. I think that the 24 set is a brilliant size as it offers a great selection of colours that can be mixed to achieve all the colours you'd probably want, but also small and compact enough to be easily taken with you on the go. Paired with a water brush and watercolour or mixed media sketchbook, this would be a wonderful portable set for all your arting needs. Speaking of which, they'd be excellent for sketchbook work where you're not too worried about the light fastness issues. But they'd also be great for displayed work if you're only using the more light fast, neutral, brown, blue and green end of the spectrum, in which case they'd be good for landscapes and wildlife studies I'd imagine. I can't compare them to any other watercolour pencils right now, as I haven't had much experience with them, but I'm looking into buying some other sets to try out. I'm especially interested in trying these out against the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, which seem to be at a similar price point, but look to be more light fast. I'd love to try these pencils out as an underpainting to coloured pencil pieces, as they lay down a little quicker, are a little bit more forgiving, and blend out easier than coloured pencils uh, with organic solvents. So going over a quick summary about what I liked and disliked about these pencils. Starting off with my biggest hang up, and you're probably bored of me telling you about this now, um, I don't like how these have mixed light fastness ratings relatively low compared to other artist grade pencils, and I feel like this fact alone could make this set a lot less competitive. On the other hand, the cores and the pencils feel great, and I love their laydown and effects they give, but I think that the overall build quality of the pencils could be better as the cores aren't perfectly centered and the casings don't feel top quality. But they are good value for money, especially at the price that I got them for, and are one of the cheaper sets of artists' watercolour pencils out there. The colour selection in this set is perfect, and are on the slightly subdued side, which I think really enhances that watercolour feel, and lends themselves brilliantly for more natural scenes. The printing on the pencil is also really clear, which is something I appreciate, especially for pencils in larger sets. So here's the finished piece, and I'm really happy with the outcome. So that's it for this video, I'd love to hear if you have had any experience with these pencils yourself, or perhaps you're looking to buy them. As always, I'm free to answer your questions in the comments section down below. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this review interesting and helpful. If you did, please leave it a like, and hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with more arty videos. Thank you very much for watching, have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next video!